If you look closely, you can see Cleveland in the background. He oh. set our river on fire oh. back in the 80s. Oh. I played a fan. <laughs> Welcome to the Kindred Spirit Podcast, a show all about the board game Spirit Island. Here we'll talk about analytics and strategies within the game, as well as a plethora of other topics that can be found within it. Today we're going to have a fun discussion looking at what we're calling the All-Star Team, which is just a fun exercise in team composition based on the roles each spirit usually plays. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So many powers? We'll get into it. Okay, Laura's here too. Okay, cool. (laughs) Hold up, they don't love you like I love you. (laughs) She's back. Well, John, since this baby was your idea, I don't see why you can't be the one to describe everyone. What is all this? I was bored at work one day because I actually had to go <laughs> into the office. I'm like, ugh, I don't want to work. <laughs> so, naturally. naturally. <laughs> I mean, I answered emails and, and did stuff. <laughs> no one of your work listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't play this. But you got to send that 9 a.m. email to be like, I'm here. And there then you, you kind of like do what you want. <laughs> but I was texting around like, I want to start a discussion or see what people think about who the best roles are, best spirits are for each role. Mm -hmm. We got offense, control, fear, defense, and then utility. And I was going to call like an all-star team. Mm -hmm. So when you're building an all-star team, say like the NBA or MLB, you can only have one player at each position, but you pick the best shortstop Mm -hmm. of the whole league against, you know, the NL versus the AL or something. But you can only have one. I know there's like backups. Mm -hmm. Just give them the starting lineup. So I was like, who is your starting lineup? And yeah, it's something that was interesting because there's been a lot of discussion about tier list Mm -hmm. and who's the strongest in general. And everyone's like, keeper, keeper. But like, where does Keeper fall in your mm-hmm. role? Are they the strongest defender or the offense people? Mm-hmm. Or are they just like good at everything? So I was wondering like, who is the best controller? Is everyone going to say Finder? Are people going to say River or Thunderspeaker or whatever? So mm-hmm. yeah, that was my thing. And then we got some feedback. We'll get into that into the next episode. But I wanted to see what your guys' opinions are because we all played very differently. Mm-hmm. We like different team compositions. And I thought it'd be interesting to bring the whole gang back and see what everyone's opinion was. So right off the bat, there are some uh, clarifications to why this is all kind of hogwash. And so, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. so the first thing immediately that strikes me is obviously there are the different summaries of powers. Mm-hmm. And so I feel as if this can be interpreted in so many different ways. Because what's funny is on the Reddits, you had it worded as if you were to make a Spirit Island all-star team, what five spirits would be selected that you deem best at their quote unquote position? Mm-hmm. What spirit for you has had the most success at being offensive or control focused, generating fear, etc.? The thing that was funny was this post of yours is a little bit different from what you asked me in a text message. When you texted oh, me, what did I say? <laughs> it was more along the lines of if you were to make a five player team where each team member represented each of the things offense, control, fear, defense, right. utility, who would your team be if you wanted the most successful team? Oh, okay. Mm. So, Gotta here, be a similar thing. So, I guess what it all boils down to is if I'm thinking of the most successful spirit for a certain thing, period. And then that's just one dude all by themselves as the highest. But then I have five solo dudes who are just each individually the best Mm -hmm. versus, well, how do they actually all work together? When they come and play together. Because one of the biggest, probably the most common thing I hear about this game of why it's so fun is the co-op, the team aspect, the synergies. So does this necessarily mean that, yes, even though so-and-so might be the best fullback and someone else may be the best striker and someone else may be the best midfielder yeah. do they all gel to mm-hmm. be the most successful team I think we've seen that in the NBA sometimes where it's like you get the best right. person at each position and nobody wants to pass the ball because right. they all want to showboat because there's only one ball it's right. like when you have three fantastic solo singers and yet when they all do a trio they're all tripping over themselves trying That's to cool. be ahead of themselves do you see what i mean how Definitely. it's like kind yeah. of odd how it can be 
well, how do they all gel versus how do they all individually represent the role there? But another thing is that each spirit changes during the game, mm-hmm. some drastically. So the roles wouldn't necessarily be championed by one spirit exclusively from start to finish. Because so, you can pick up different powers you just put or lose Starlight powers. Starlight seeks its form in every single role. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so Starlight. true. Starlight. 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 No one can be like, wait, that's actually kind of right. 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 Real hard right. at the beginning. No and one then... can tell you you're wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then again, since there are five categories, offense, control, fear, defense, utility, this hypothetical fun thing that we're doing here is a five player team, which most people don't do. Not to mention that there are some characters that are multifaceted that probably won't get representation here because they have fingers and many pies. Mm. So the spirits that are all heavily consolidated into one thing are probably going to get the spotlight more than the characters that are multifaceted. And so as a result of that, you know, a three-player team, what's the all-star team for three players? Well, since this character picks up offense and control, things, right? and this character does fear, the other one does utility and defense, that's the perfect all-star team. But the ratios of who represents which things offense, control, fear, defense, utility, are different on a five-player team because then you can have literally one spirit per category. Mm. Versus in a two-player game, one dude's taken three, one dude's taken two, and they're sharing a third or something like that. You see how, like, the ratios kind of shift around a bit depending on the player count? So this is all for funsies, so who cares? But it's fun to kind of team build sometimes. It is. Well, we love doing that. Yeah. And there's also the personality involved where you really gel with shadows and Mm -hmm. you really gel with... With yep. fangs. And, and other then there's the whole personal roles. preference. Yeah. <laughs> so if somebody is the best fear spirit and you have no idea how to play it, we've seen that with your brother, like they're not going to be the best fear spirit point. anymore. And it's just, you know. You called him as the best fear spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, spoilers for her list. But I hope you see what I'm meaning with all these clarifications. Like everyone can change. Anyone could be anything. Thing. And then it all kind of depends on who else is on the team. How well do you actually can complete change your spirit. Right. Right. And how do you fit in with other people, both the spirit they're playing and the human? Like, there are just so a lot many of variables. Time to be controversial. <laughs> Alrighty. So, one thing that I legitimately love about this game and have loved ever since the start of it was on the back of the player boards, there's fun lore, which mm-hmm. I absolutely love, but there's also a summary of powers as well as a at-a-glance play style with how the spirit is at the start. I love that for how easy and quick it is for new players to get a quick vibe of the characters. See Especially what they that actually play do. style, because I'm like, yes. oh, when yes. I would first read those, right. this it's is just enough does. information to be educational to get you some good pointers, but it's not nearly limiting enough to be like, you have to be like this forever. Like, <laughs> Did you ever drive somewhere and the yep. GPS says, <laughs> you ever drive? <laughs> and the GPS is like, you'll be there in 15 minutes. You're like, ha <laughs> <10." laughs> no. But then you actually get there in 15 minutes. You're like, darn it. Bummer. <laughs> I would read like lightning. He's like, you're going to have some off turns. Like, ha ha. No, I won't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> GPS, right again. The folly of it. Like, you press. <laughs> I should have listened. <laughs> should have listened. <laughs> no play style, Matt. <laughs> anyway. But no, the game is a game of adaptation and change. And sometimes it's beneficial to maybe not change a bunch and stay in your element. Sometimes it's kind of fun. Like you said, that one major came in, you're like, you know what? I wasn't planning on this. But, and the elements do not help me. But the but, effect yes. is critically important to the situation. Because look how this would help me. Look how that would help me. Let's do it. And then you get another thing. Hey, well, you know, since I have those elements, here are those elements again. I can go this way. Yeah. Like, the whole spirit changes based on one major. Mm-hmm. And then start out looking in the mirror. What am I? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> Fractured over there, just sitting there with all their Chico's. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the thing that's so cool is looking at the fact that each of these characters have an offense, control, fear, defense, and utility rating. Mm-hmm. You can kind of see, compared to their other stats, how they compare in certain aspects to other aspects. Now, of course, the length of those bars are only relative to that spirit. So if someone's pegged on something that doesn't mean that someone else who's also pegged at that thing is more or less. If there was like somehow a numeric value like oh officially that would be this character nice. is like 9 fear rating but, but this character is at 8 
boy, eight is really good, but technically not as big as nine. Yeah. But we don't have those numeric values, that kind of thing. I think so there really is no way to actually come up with that because the game, the game is so varied. Unless you're a finder so and you look at control. It's like, well, <laughs> finder makes sense. Nobody no one contests really finder. Like that. <laughs> right. But everything else, I can see why they want to put that kind of ambivalent graph bar mm-hmm. to kind of just give you a basic idea yeah. mm-hmm. while not really trying to yeah. like pigeonhole everybody. And the goal, yeah. like we said, is to get a glimpse of where you are at the start. And besides, these stats are subject to change, like we said. So it's not critically important that we have these numeric values because those aren't even set in stone anyhow. But it's kind of fun to look at the game mechanics as they are represented by offense control for your defense utility and which abilities, which actions actually fall within each category. Some are a lot more straightforward to understand than others. But some of them, I didn't quite know what they meant until we actually started doing research on this. So... Offense, this one is pretty straightforward. This is damaging or destroying invaders. Makes sense. I don't think anyone has ever had... Your DPS character. Right. Any questions about what the heck this is. Even a noob is like, offense, yeah, that's just killing stuff. Straight up killing stuff. Then you have control. This one is a little bit medium to understand. Like, okay, it's not as easy... Control is simply moving pieces on the board. Okay, that's easy to understand, but that's all the pieces. Any piece. That's good guys. That's bad guys. That's beasts. That could be a token, perhaps, if you are spreading rot. rot. (laughs) (laughs) You're moving things. And you are subverting bad guy plans by shuffling them around, but not removing them or killing them. No. Which is interesting. And that was something that definitely for me, as we spoke on Ad Nauseam in the past, was something that was very much a acquired understanding understanding was, oh, you don't have to kill people in order to win. So long as you got them away mm-hmm. from where the bad guys wanted to be in that time. It takes a while good. for that to click. Like right. you said, often it's just like, oh yeah, if the white pieces are off the right. board, we win. Right. Mm-hmm. But with just, control. Bad guy is here. Bad guy is bad. I remove bad guy. <laughs> Now things are good because bad guy is gone. No more bad guys. Control is bad guy still here, but he's not where he needed to be. And that's not something that's immediately understood for a new player, I think. It definitely was not for me. I think that's why bringers are high complexity mm-hmm. because nothing's leaving. Right. Things are just moving around and there's mm-hmm. only fear. Yep. I think it's multiplying. You're like, oh, we got this in the bag and there's like so many cities and like, how are we supposed to win? Oh, mm-hmm. we did win. Oh, okay. Yep. And at first it's not as like satisfying either because right. there's always a satisfaction yeah. in it's taking very stuff satisfying. off the board. It's very satisfying. But you have to really understand why you're doing what you're doing right. in order to be satisfied with just scoot and stuff. Understanding True. the value of each of these categories is, I think, a very big thing for a newer player. Actually and adequately understanding the value of each of these things. Yeah. But, speaking of fear, fear is quite simple. Uh, it's a... Uh, uh, it, it, it's generating fear. Okay. Hey. <laughs> in reality, what this does to the game is you just take that little skull and crossbones token slide and you go, down. slide it down. So that's what it literally is. But mechanically, what this does for the game is the more fear you have, the shorter the game will be. And it will be easier to clinch a victory condition that all these other things can do for you. A little bit easier. And then fear can actually be done by this if you go 100%. So it's interesting how fear upgrades offense, control, defense, and utility in the fact that the terror victories are easier when you get that. But to get a terror victory, you got to kill everything. So how do you kill stuff? By offense, control, defense. Of course, if you spam fear even more, then you can just do straight up fear. Fear victory. But it's interesting how fear makes things easier first for all the other ones, mm-hmm. for terror level, before it does fear. Because obviously fear victory is just, hey, you mm-hmm. got through all the fear cards. But what's interesting when it comes to fear is usually a character that does fear won't be as involved with offense, control, defense, and utility as much as other characters. So if you have two characters, Characters and both do offense, control, defense, and utility, but none do fear, you're going to be very well situated for the actual board. Bad guys coming in, you're preventing them. The bad guys doing stuff, you're killing them, you're yeah. controlling them. The actual physical board state, you're doing pretty good. But are you winning? But if you don't have any fear, you're going to have to do that dance for a long time. 
So take out one of those characters and put in a fear dude. Well, you're not going to be as good at controlling the board, keeping the board under wraps because you don't have that second player who's doing offense, control, defense, utility. Mm -hmm. You have someone doing fear. This means that the dance you're doing is going to be harder. It's going to be harder to plug all the holes in the dike. But this harder dance you're doing doesn't need to last as long. A little bit quicker. Because you have someone else bringing that long-term thing into short-term. So there is an extreme value to fear. Although making the front end of the game perhaps a little more difficult, depending on the speed, of course, yeah. and how they're played, and what cards you find. <laughs> but on the back end, you're making the whole game better for the long term because you're not going to have to do it as long. I think that's interesting. There's a qualifier for that fear bar where it doesn't include the fear from destroyed buildings. Yeah. When it's being measured in the summary mm-hmm. of powers, like Bringer has fear off the charts, but obviously they yep. can't quote unquote destroy. Right. So it's just like fear that is generated by that spirit. Where lightning mm-hmm. probably can blow up a lot of stuff and get fear from that, but they're yep. not including that in the bar. It's almost like you have to be a nightmare and you have to leave the people alive to be like truly fearsome. Yeah, the spirit itself generating fear. Either One by thing that I've always told beginner players was every spirit is scary. Mm. I mean, we're the elements come to life. Yeah. You know, from the perspective of a invader who's like, do we do we do? Hey, this place looks a cool. Giant rock guy is ah! pretty scary. You're yeah. right. <laughs> every spirit is terrifying, but some really invoke the terror and fright more than others. Like get into your because dreams. when you see a lizard, you're like, oh hey, a lizard. It could be poisonous. <laughs> it could be dangerous. Yeah. But I can walk away and go home miles away, and I know that lizard's probably not going to get me. But if I fall asleep at night and I have nightmares all the time, mm, that's like a ever there. present darkness yeah. that won't leave me alone. Always oh my there. goodness. I just saw some of my friends and neighbors just walk up and lethargically zombie like just walk out for some reason. Why do they just leave? What the heck is going on? You're Obvi- on Black Mirror. <laughs> Obviously, Lord just called them. But you get the idea. Like, Lord's if I see scary. a rock giant, I'm like, oh crap. That's scary. Anyway, and then, I, and then I like walk over to like another part of the island where I don't have to deal with that. It's over there. But, Are you like... saying they're slow spirits? <laughs> what are you trying to say about Earth? Kind of. <laughs> anyway. But I love them. Play might. <laughs> yes, yes. Anyway, that's fear. Mm-hmm. Then defense. I feel as if defense at first is very easy to understand, but there's a little bit more that happens in defense okay. that some newer people might not immediately think of. So defense, first off, is defense of damage. Pretty straightforward, right. kind of in the name. Good, good. But it also represents blight removal and prevention oh. of oh. invader actions. Did you know that? I did not really realize. I was kind of wondering where blight removal would be yeah, would fall. Yep. Yep. So the best defense is getting that blight back off the board. Well, mm-hmm. not the best, but Cleaning one, it up. one way. Well, I mean, if okay. they're doing like 100 damage and they just like put on one blight, you're like, oh, cool, good job, guys. I'll remove that yep. one blight. So yeah. it's like nothing happens. Well, that's yep. nifty. Defending damage is very straightforward. I have three damage coming in. I'm stopping two of it. It, not enough to blight. It was defended. Yep. I rendered a bad guy attack inert because of an action that I did. Pretty straightforward stuff. But then, like you said, blight removal is a big thing because if I get rid of a blight and they would attack there again, had I not removed the blight, then they would be one step closer to the win condition because it cascades and they get more blight and the bad guys win if there's more blight. Is that cool? That is so so cool. long term, I'm defending the island because I am thwarting the blight loss condition by doing yeah. blight removal. Of course, preventing invader actions is easily the best. And <laughs> as it has been Stop stated many Many times in life, the best way to deal with any problem is to prevent it. And so this supersedes any kind of blight removal or defense because if you negate the problem before it ever happens, there was then never a problem. There was never a problem. This has so many different kinds of examples. Someone literally just skipping an action, year of perfect stillness, mm-hmm. green going, no, mm-hmm. and destroying one of their sacred sites so that they can stop something from happening. Many minds. This could stopping. be a token that was used. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to build here. Oh, well, there's a disease token, instead of focusing on building your infrastructure, you're going to have to build hospitals and medicine stuff to clear the disease instead. Mm. So it was stopped. Explorers trying to come in. Wild tokens. Nope. You prevented it. And so... This is something I usually only thought of was just defending the land Mm. when I think of defense. Yep. Like, when I would see that on Keeper's chart, their defense was high. I'm like, oh, Mm. that's weird. They don't, like, have a defend card. card, Right. The wild 
tokens yep. is stopping so much, and they can mm-hmm. so easily spit those out. Yep. If there's no explorers coming in, then they're not building, and mm-hmm. they're not ravaging. Prevention. That is that. Right. So seeing that, kind of like how Laura was saying with the blight remove, like, mm-hmm. oh, another yep. form of defense. Gotcha. It's one of the reasons why I personally consider control when control is at a ridiculously extreme level equates to defense in the form of prevention. Because if you controlled bad guys so well yeah. and you clumped everybody so that no one was adjacent to a land or something, mm-hmm. isolation also comes in here, mm-hmm. so well, then that equates to preventing. Because what's preventing? Stopping a bad guy thing before it happened. Well, if everyone's controlled into one spot, they're not all over here or over there. So they're those actions can't ravage. Right, yeah. happen. So in the same way, control, when spammed to a ludicrously high amount, equates to defense because you prevented so many things. And we saw that in our France game. And you'll hear every now and then from me, Finder is actually a decent defender. What? what? Because if you control everything, no, you can't stop incoming damage in the present while it's coming right at you. But in the future damage, you can stop so much future damage from coming in because you clumped all the bad guys in there. It's straightforward. I'm getting a little metaphysical with, yeah, you know, right. how that works. But that's one thing that is very important to understand if you are a beginner player. If you control someone so well, then you're not going to have to worry about any of those problems. Like Finder and our Sweden game. Sweden's buildings do extra damage, but Finder was able to move them, like Ryan was saying, so they're not able to do the extra damage and the mist would come in and kill everything. So, so much control is stopping everything from building, or in Sweden's case, doing that extra damage. I dig that. That's very smart. And that's like one of the things that if you play like me and you tend to think about just like what's happening right now, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that can be hard to master. But when you see it done, it's like, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh. It's kind of like how a sponge can soak up water. And so when water versus sponge, it's like, oh, man, and sponge is going to win because you're going to soap up all the water. Unless you flood the freaking thing and then there's no way it has any chance. Water wins. And so water wins. And this way, control can stop incoming damage. What? Well, if you have so much control, like, oh, geez, I can't go anywhere. I can't get my attacks out. Yeah. All the spirits have confided me into one spot and I can't do anything. <laughs> that's the mind of the adversary. Mode. So that's defense. But then here's the weird one. Utility. What's this one do? Uh, it's everything else. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> when, you, <laughs> when you consider offense, control, fear, defense, utility is just everything else. It's just so. literally like a belt. <laughs> it's like whatever's on right. the utility belt. So that, to some people, is a unsatisfying catch-all. Like, okay, that's everything else, but what, like, is that? Like, what is... <laughs> really does that actually entail? Because on Trickster's summary powers, their utility is right. pretty high. And I'm right. like, what? What do they do? It's like, and who knows? So... It's random. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say? Who's to say? We don't know. It's utility. Right. When someone sees high utility, oh, what does that mean? Um, I would always equate to support. Like, <laughs> oh, you're helping out. You're being supportive, giving people energy, right. letting people grow. What I always told people was that usually equated to Team Buffy. Uh, okay. And helping you somehow in a way that's not regarded to offense Good or defense or control or fear. When it comes to utility, usually the first thing people think of is support in the form of like team buffing or whatnot. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot more to utility than just team support because there's a lot in that category that isn't team buffing but still very utility based now to some people this whole oh it's everything else is not good enough I'm one of those people so here's an example of what utility so here's actually means so Ryan's definition <laughs> step aside Eric Royce well this isn't my definition these are other things that other people have lent their voice to to oh, kind of okay. assist but I definitely agree with it so utility can look like giving energy to friends it can look like giving elements to friends somehow or maybe giving extra powers to another player it can look like any effect that changes somehow a power that is played so it could be anything that increases the range of a thing Mm -hmm. so if you increase the damage of a thing that would equate to offense so utility would be something more like changing the range of a thing or changing the speed of a thing Allowing someone else to put presence on the board or maybe move someone else's presence. Keeping someone's presence alive would be a defense thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exchanging cards among another player would be definitely a utility thing. Mm. Looking at something that's actually not on the board, but more like the banker board. You know how like every game is like a banker's board? Like looking at the fear card. So in this game, exactly. the banker board would be where all the events are, where the invader deck is, where the events are. So looking 
looking at events or invader cards would be utility. All these things that I just described would be under the confines of utility. So there you go. That Those is are a, the Is that a summary of the summary of powers? That's right. A summary of the summary. <laughs> Of the yeah, summary, summary, of the summary, <laughs> summary squared. Interestingly enough, though, in regards to the fear rating, fear doesn't include fear generated by destroying buildings. Powers affecting other spirits count based on what they do for the other spirit. So, for instance, the plus one damage buff on Flame's Fury is offense, while the push and fear from Angel of Dread is control and fear. Note that the bar length is not absolute, i.e. comparable between the spirits. It's relative to the other bars on the same spirit to show the areas that that spirit focuses on or doesn't. So that's something we have to remember yep. about the bars being relative within that one spirit. Yep. Mm. Well, we kind of mentioned that. I know, because mm-hmm. there's been posts on BGG and Reddit of just like, here's all the rankings of like, right. who's the best I control and who's yep. second, but it's like, well, it's kind of within each spirit. So right. It's right. Yep. hard to compare. Alrighty. Should we get into the teams? Let's, Let's do go. it. Yeah. You all ready for this? <laughs> we Starting use... at point guard. <laughs> we used that musical theme for our teaser video for the... We did. The great debate. <laughs> the great event debate. That's right. <laughs> you know what's interesting? Because hmm. I was like putting this together. I don't play offensive spirits with y'all that often. Laura takes it all the time. Laura takes it. <laughs> or I am usually a controller. When I'm playing solo or on the digital on Steam, yeah. obviously sometimes I have to. Mm-hmm. But who do you guys think would be my favorite? Oh, here's a fun thing. If we try to guess everyone. <laughs> yeah, try and guess at least my offensive one because I barely play offensive lightning. spirits. That's true. Okay. Yeah, I can see lightning. You can see lightning. You lightning But then lot. here's the thing. Who does John want to play as or who did John think was the best? Because I know that you know that you aren't so great with Thunderspeaker, but I also know that you know that Thunderspeaker Thunder is incredible. amazing. Yeah. And I also know that you know that Ocean is amazing. Yeah. Yet I also know that you know that you're not very good not at good. piloting Ocean. <laughs> so, do you see what I mean? You always got to marry an Ocean main. <laughs> build your list here. Did you build it on just facts, regardless of your opinion, or did you want to do it with a team that you wanted to play yourself? It's a little so. bit of both. Okay. Okay. I went with Vengeance. Oh. <laughs> that was a choice. Ooh. Tell us more. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> that was a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like. I thought you liked That's Vengeance. Maybe you had that one game. I did. I did. But We're on like, the road I've to recovery. <laughs> I think what Ryan brought up really good points about how spirits can change based on what cards they draft or what majors they pull, and they maybe mm-hmm. they have to forget uniques, and you change throughout time. I liked Vengeance because it's kind of built into their kit to be offensive. No yeah. matter what cards they lose, their innates and their special rule are offensively driven. Right. Okay. So both innates, and we've talked about this, Ryan. There's mm-hmm. few spirits with two innates that. Both do offense. Two. Two. <laughs> Fangs, as Ryan has touted many mm-hmm. times, and we've had a lot of good feedback to some people playing Fangs again. Mm-hmm. And then Vengeance is the other one who has a fast damaging innate and then a slow damaging mm-hmm. innate. So I think that was something that really stood out to me that throughout the game, things might change, but you always had that special rule where Blight equates to more damage. Mm-hmm. No matter what card you draft, that rule will always be there where if there's Blight on the board, you get extra damage. Mm-hmm. So, And yes, technically we know that Starlight has two as well, but Starlight's just the biggest question mark that we don't consider Starlight in these various numbers. Like, oh, there's only two spirits that does this. Oh, and then there's Starlight. I actually oh, tried. there's only three spirits that do that. And, and, oh, Starlight. and Starlight. I tried finding a place for Starlight. It came close with the control because we brought up a couple weeks ago just like how Starlight is very good that at control. That Aeronate mm-hmm. is actually really underrated. But it's just like, I just couldn't squeeze that spirit. And nonetheless. Yep. But yep. No, I feel it. What I like about Vengeance is as the game gets harder, as the adversary gets more difficult, as the situation gets more dire, mm-hmm. Vengeance then gets stronger. It's like, mm. okay, seriously, bring it on. That thing's about to blight and then cascade. Awesome. I feel it. That's like more ammo in my gun. Oh, the double blight, two extra damage, the cascade, another mm. extra damage. So I like that because me and Ryan have been playing harder games now and I've been trying to defeat the achievements on Steam and play harder games to do that. And with that, I'm like, Vengeance would be good here because mm. my island maybe isn't looking so good, but Vengeance could thrive in that. So I think that's where it stood out to me where you can can't lose this identity because it's kind of built into the spirits. I like the damaging that stacks. I like the double growth. 
I actually re-listened back to our Vengeance first impressions. Mm. And Ryan, you said you basically just like spam growth, let things go kaput, and then turned on the jets. Mm. And that is something that, that yes... very clumsy of a strategy. <laughs> right, but... but <laughs> did it work? But it worked. Yeah. You won. And I know it's like you don't have as many avenues, say, as you do with other spirits of like how to grow mm-hmm. or how to build your spirit. Maybe because I'm not very good at offense. So mm. I kind of want the character I think is the best. And so if the game's doing bad because I'm playing that spirit bad, that's kind of a good thing. You can take advantage of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. weird because while you're failing, you're sitting there with your little martini with a little umbrella in it. Like, okay, hold on. Just one second, guys. <laughs> Okay, Crack's not going. Yeah. yeah! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> because <laughs> I will openly admit, and I've said this before, and listeners know, I'm not good at offense. Mm. So if I'm playing a spirit, I'm not good with Thunderspeaker. I lose my mm. Dahan. Or I'm not good with Ocean. I'm never in the right place. I'm always, like, away mm. tied when I need to be on <laughs> the actual coastal land. And yeah. I'm just, like, never there when I need to be. But with Vengeance, I can lose presence. Mm-hmm. And that's a good thing. Right. And I can, like, get fear for that. And I can let things build. And I can let the island blight and cascade so maybe if i'm playing poorly because i'm not good at this facet it I makes have, sense i have a spear that's better so that's why right. i picked vengeance it's an attack i'm just not good at it so it has I, a <laughs> contingency for when you fail yeah because i kind of <laughs> assume i'm not gonna do well right so that was my pick for vengeance and i did like literally how offensive they are fangs is really fun i'm mm-hmm. just not as good so again it's a very thinky spirit i said that right. when we did our france episode where you just got really plan ahead with those beasts right and sometimes no, it's that true. does, it's true. I do struggle with that. Mm-hmm. So Vengeance, it's a little less planny. It's like literally, yeah, let the island burn and then go to town. So, <laughs> and then it's easy to find damage cards and even the minor deck, like a right. one or two damage card can mm. honestly take out a city. So that was cool. That was so smart, babe. That was my offense. <laughs> I feel it. So next one's Control. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think... <laughs> Are we going to have a guess on Find that Find her a river. I mean, <laughs> which is it? <laughs> ooh, ooh, that's a tricky one. So this is so hard. This was probably my hardest to pick because this is my favorite play style to play. Mm-hmm. Or just like my favorite thing to tap into. Because there's two alternate as well. Honestly, Besides those two. I wouldn't pick Thunderspeaker. But Thunderspeaker <laughs> honestly controls a lot. Yeah. Of you have to control your own peeps. Picking yes. But you like controlling bad guys. Yes. That's Ryan. like your niche. And that's why I don't think I liked mines as much because you're controlling those yeah. bees. But you're not as yep. much doing what the white plant plastic I went for Boating Shadows. I knew, I, did. I knew it! I knew it! The alternate, it was either Lure or Foreboding Shadows. I thought about Lure. Lure yep. might be yep. the strongest. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of moving pieces there with Lure, but... Go ahead. Continue. Okay, all right, all right. I picked Foreboding, and I have taken heat on this. <laughs> <laughs> on, on BGG and on Reddit because of some comment I said on our France episode. <laughs> uh, um, it's almost like if you give yourself a platform to say a lot of things, people will then say up things about you saying those I things. I feel like I, Ryan, did people I, can have opinions. No, that's, that's okay. what I'm saying. I'm I making fun like, of John. Did I put a qualifier in? Like, <laughs> I might just be on this high of like our game. I feel like I put some qualifier in. <laughs> now I'm leaning into it. That time is over. <laughs> okay. Reasons. So now there's two innates, right? Mm-hmm. Foreboding has a second innate. Mm-hmm. So that gives two innates where you have control in the fast phase. Only one other spirit can do this. That is Finder. Mm-hmm. Finder has closed the ways where you can isolate and then you have the left mm-hmm. innate where I forget, but you can move things around. Mm-hmm. Both in the fast phase. So I'm like, okay, that's one and two right now. It's yeah. like, how do I break these up? So Finder is Traveler's Boon and you can move people around. You can make other yep. people control. And, and then you can move cities. And you can move cities. For boating, you can make other people into controllers as we talked about. Mm-hmm. With the one moon tier innate. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if anyone does fear or damage to equate to fear in a land, they can become right. controllers and move things around. Mm-hmm. And it is oh so easy to, in some way, get some, some fear sort of fear into or a damage wind. something. If you really think about how stupid easy that is to happen. That's where a lot of people I felt were not seeing it because everyone immediately went to Ocean. Well, Ocean can do the same thing. I really think it's easier with the cards that are in the deck to make a partnership with Foreboding happen so much easier, consistent than it would be to make a partnership with Ocean happen. But they both can happen. They're both both awesome. They're both great. But you can't move any cities with Ocean. You actually can move cities when Shadow's like, well, let me downgrade that guy for you. Then you did fear move the town. Bam. Can't do that with Ocean. 
Potion, but you can do that with For Shadows. Burning, yeah, shadows. I'm not saying one's better, one's worse. I'm just saying stop ignoring truth in one area if you're going to so willingly acknowledge it in another. Thank you. So, Ryan. yeah. And plus, because it's only one moon, mm-hmm. it is so easy to trigger for shadows itself. It's ridiculous. Every easy. starting card is moon, and you can pick yeah. up cards that have moon. Yep. What pushed it over the edge is Traveler's Boon is a card, and then the one moon tier is an innate. Mm-hmm. So that can happen every turn. Mm-hmm. And I think that is what tips the scale for me, is that these two innates, you're always being Team Buffy in that control. There's that utility, because every every single turn you can play one moon. Mm-hmm. So all the time you can do a foreboding action with one moon and then everyone can jump in on that land and help out. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I like is that it brings that extra utility where a lot of control spirits are focused on one thing or they have flaws. I don't see mm-hmm. a whole ton of flaws with foreboding shadows. I know the tracks are weak. You start off with zero in one card play, mm-hmm. but you can do damage. You can do control tons of fear. You mm-hmm. have utility now with like everything else, right. even mental dread. You can make people push things around mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think i would bring to my team someone who can check off a lot of boxes because i know finder poof, control is just like max to the yeah. top yep but that's just control period river is control and offense yeah bringer would be control and fear, fear. and foreboding can do i think everything all three of those I but even, just at different rates i think even defense you're not defending the mm-hmm. land but you're defending the han right so you can protect the han so yeah there's one blight but if they can wipe out a whole town in two mm-hmm. cities and there's right. four to han grouped up there mm-hmm. that's defense in my book mm-hmm. i think there's a whole lot of good just with shadow starting kit and then what foreboding adds to it yeah so that would be my control for voting shadows. I know I'm going to get heat. I know Finder is just like, this should be the answer because mm-hmm. they're pegged. Well, like I said before, if you think about each role as it's something that is, oh, who is the best in the one thing? Yeah. Oh, that's this character. But how does that actually click into this team that you're making? You're right. So I think that you can interpret this list a different way. And I hope you understand, I'm not trying to get very <laughs> heated with the whole who's better with this, who's better with that. I'm just saying, make sure that you still acknowledge the truth of certain things because guess what? Ocean can give you energy. Yeah. That's really useful. Shadows can't do that. And yet, Mm -hmm. at the same time, it's so prevalent, even amidst our own comedic jokes we made in the past, where it's like, huh, Shadow's lame. (laughs) It's like, well, guess what? Shadows can get, like, eight fear easy within a single reclaim cycle. Or, yeah. like, two turns. That's amazing. <laughs> like, I remember someone was talking about, like, oh, I'm going to make, like, the hardest team for you to play. I'm like, okay. And they are talking about, like, okay, so for the fear person, I gave you shadows because shadows is lame. I'm like, oh, jokes on you. They're yeah. fantastic with they fear. They are. Right? <laughs> with fear, yeah. So, like, it's fun to make jokes. But still, like, truth is still truth. And shadows is phenomenal in certain ways. And so is ocean. I'm not trying to point fingers and be like, that's lame. Or this is lame. Like I said, I have give a... Give credit to where creds do. Yeah. That's all. For my fear spirits i picked another aspect i know Ooh. everyone thinks like bringer as the i was spirits. wondering if you guys were going to do aspects for your i did list here i did i consider them playable versions of a spirit yeah i, I mean, know they're official and everything yeah they were oh, released right. but i picked pandemonium lightning oh i dig it so we've talked when we cover the aspects how that new innate can do 11 fear yeah so obviously that's like hard to max out but insane it is insane but i I think you can do at least seven fear a turn. You get one fear from Harbinger's Lightning, you get two fear from Shattered Homesteads, and I think you could do the first two tiers of that new innate. Mm. And I think if you're constantly doing seven fear a turn, and who knows what you're picking up in the minor deck, if you go for majors, because Raging Storm becomes even less useful, because you don't need that water innate, now you're looking for Moon mm. with Pandemonium. So I kind of like that consistency, still yeah. can do damage, unlike Bringer, because you still can do Shattered Homesteads. And then the Harbinger's of Lightning now have a use where you're moving those to hunt around, they can strike a land, and then they do mm-hmm. the damage for you. So I like the consistency. I like that you still have Lightning Spoon. That's always a good card to have. So you still have utility from this character. Yeah, I think Pandemonium was my top pick. I think just because consistency. And I like having Strife. And I think it's easy. I mean, two fear, first mm-hmm. tier. Two more fear. Right. Second tier. Three fear. You know, mm-hmm. third tier. And then four fear. It's just like, it's insane. If and you on can a get team up with Foreboding Shadows, this oh, is going to be that'd huge. be crazy. Yeah. And how quickly you can get down card plays right. where you can maybe unlock that innate if you're finding cheap miners. Mm -hmm. You can get maxed out on the new innate Mm -hmm. really easy because you can get to six card plays like that with like right. so I like that potential I know that Mist can do fear through time passes and I've seen mm-hmm. sharp fangs and obviously I love foreboding shadows or just any version of shadows mm-hmm. but there's something about Panama and Lightning I think didn't have a lot of flaws other than energy gain but every spirit has some flaw so I went another aspect for my fear one thing that's kind of funny though is I'm also thinking about your attack
attacker, your offense character on this team was Vengeance. Mm -hmm. And so Shadows has this really cool thing where you can just be like invulnerable to Han. Bam, gather to Han in there. For the price of one blight, you can do a ton of damage. But a blight comes in. Vengeance, I don't mind. (laughs) So like And then Pandemonium Lightning moving those to Han around as well. And then strifing things. It may be if you don't want so much blight to come in. So yeah, Mm -hmm. the team synergy is kind of there. This was another hard one was my defensive one. Yep. There's so many standouts. You have like the OG Vital Strength of the Earth. Mm. You have the shiny new toy, Stones Unyielded and Defiance that everyone loves. Green, goodness. Yep. <laughs> like spread of rampant green for Pete's <laughs> yep. sake. I mean, we got mines in that defensive innates. Mm-hmm. And our Sweden pole, Trickster, mm-hmm. was the defender to mm-hmm. stop all that damage because Strive yep. negates it all. Yet there is two that you haven't mentioned. Someone's keeping true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? I'm a good listener. <laughs> I even kind of considered Serpent because of that area defense. That's is one of the two. Really good. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I picked down. It is. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one I thought you looked What? No, you don't know me. I was like, he hasn't said downpour. He hasn't said downpour. He hasn't said downpour. Downpour, downpour. downpour. There it is. Here's another one where the spirit can kind of change and pick up different cards and spam and repeat them, but Mm -hmm. built into its kit is those defensive innates Mm -hmm. where your presence stacks. And then the second tier stacks on that. Stacks on stacks. Stacks on stacks. And then as we talked about, blight removal is a form of defense. Oh, look at your right innate and how you can take away blight. (laughs) And that is something that you cannot change. And oh, by the way, you get a defend three card Mm -hmm. that you can wait. Can you repeat that over and over again? Because that's where your spirit is. Right. Yeah, that was my defensive spirits. Again, very powerful Mm -hmm. as well as we've seen or just heard or seen other people's like battle reports. Right. Of, wow, I was able to do this five times and I got 20 fears. So Mm -hmm. it can become more than just defense. But I like that at its root, it's super defensive. Yep. Mm. And I like the team buffy parts of it where you can bring people's presence back. Right, you're a medic. Yeah, you're a medic. So it did feel very defensive to me. And I don't feel like I'm giving Downpour enough love. It was very close to making my top five. Mm. And I haven't played that spear in a bit. I want to play it again. I miss yeah. Downpour. I also think. has Dahan Manipulation, which Dahan. is very helpful for Shadows. Very helpful for Shadows. And then Isolation is a form of control and defense in a way where you can just spam like no one comes in. That prevention. Mm-hmm. And you can just isolate this coast and nothing's coming in no matter what. Mm-hmm. And you can isolate an entire coast because guess what? You can repeat powers. Mm. So I liked Downpour. Downpour as my defensive Mm. weapon, kind of stopping out plugging holes. Mm. Utility... I kind of went a little bit of a deep dive because there's not many spirits that have like utility innates. I was trying to look for a spirit with innate powers because like we were saying, they don't change if you get new powers mm-hmm. or if you get uniques. There's Vial Strength of the Earth. You can let someone repeat. I consider that a utility innate. Yeah. Yeah. Bringer, as Laura's mentioned, you can look at the fear deck or give someone elements. Serpent, clearly, mm-hmm. can let people get cards or place presents. Mm-hmm. You got Shifting Memory with elements or you can... Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Shifting memory is not the best. <laughs> Shifting memory also lets you get cards. Yes, get cards. There we go. And not um, just cards, majors, without having to forget them. That's true. Them. Yes, shifting memory. That's big. And they can look at the next fear card. Somebody Ooh. on Reddit just posted their winning game with memory. I was like, oh yeah, that's Ooh, a thing. Oh, Ryan was defending memory. Like, <laughs> oh, and it was kind of cool to like read His through util- their game and be like, oh. Every time I see memory, I'm like, I need to give them another try. We need to play memory again. And then when it comes They're to They're one of my favorites it. for casual games, honestly. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you can just have a really fun game with memory. Right. Yep. Right. Sorry, I'm going to finish. Starlight has a random like innate power where you can just have people gain a minor power. Yeah. Wind lightning, give people range. Yeah. But you I know. already have lightning on your team. Sunshine River can just give <laughs> Every time I hear wind lightning, I just think of like a very farty bird. <laughs> <laughs> Always bringing up the comedy, <laughs> Laura. <laughs> Alright, fine, I pick Fracture Days. <laughs> Two oh, utility yeah. innates. Oh yeah. And that can always come up because serpents, I feel like those are, again are cards. And yes, there is that innate, but I don't get that as much because I feel like I never have enough plant to get it. Yeah, it's all how you play them. It's how you play. Mm. So I feel like I'm always doing something with Fracture to help sure. be Team Buffy. And then there's that right innate where you can peek at the invader deck. Always helpful. Or Yeah, or the event deck. So mm-hmm. it was funny looking at, like the summary powers. I'm like, Trickster, Volcano, they have like kind of mm-hmm. bigger utility bars. Yeah. I didn't see it. I can hear an argument for River, but... I think... 
Fracture just slipped the time, which is that left innate does so much. Oh my goodness. Fractured lives and breathes utility. You, yeah, and manipulation of things. It's manipulation incredible. of invader decks, manipulation of kind of like event boards, deck, manipulation everything. of card stats, getting them back, doing them again, <laughs> changing the speed, cha- you know, like that kind of thing. Technically not changing the speed, just they resolve right now. Which yeah. is like, wait, Basically what? Basically changes like, the speed basically. of it. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there's people on Discord that think Fractures is straight broken. Oh yeah. If you can master this character and speed up green or a keeper to mm-hmm. unseen potential, it's like, yeah. oh, this character's broken. Right. So I think the utility is buffed way to the max. And one way that Fractured helps your team as well is also with Shadows getting those Dahan. Yeah. Because Fractured can be one of the most reliable Dahan spawning characters out there. And with Favors Call Do is one of the strongest cards Shadows have. Seriously, yeah. Three fear from but then one card. A comedic interaction between Fractured and Vengeance because, hey, I'm going to prevent a Ravage happening on someone else's board. And, hey, Vengeance, do you mind getting a toy? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. That's a great <laughs> oh. So, Vengeance has a Sacred Sight on a spot. Mind if I Ravage your toys? Yeah, man. <laughs> That's just more stuff for me. Yeah, another... A Blight and a Disease. Happens again. Another Blight. <laughs> yes. Another Disease. Again. Again. Oh. again. again. Goes in there next turn. There's, like, four auto damage right there <laughs> on top of whatever else they're doing. Yeah, man. This is great. I get one damage here. <laughs> Boom. You see, like, a nuclear so, blast. Yeah, so, usually fractured saying I'm gonna take care of you by <laughs> doing one less invader action and then to the other person that he's giving the extra action to I'm really sorry I'm, I'm, next time sorry. I'll make it out to you I'll make it out to you and Vengeance here is like I'm fine like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll play that card as much as you want bud <laughs> right all the damage on my board please <laughs> like, and fractured giving people extra card plays because I played fractured while you played Amorphous Shadows and mm-hmm. how nice was it for you to get to that third or fourth card mm-hmm. play it was crazy helpful <laughs> it is helpful because sometimes it takes a little bit to get card plays with shadows because there's like a double three there and you don't mm-hmm. grow as fast so yeah I do like mm-hmm. my team synergy yeah so let's look at your team your attacker was vengeance mm-hmm. controller was foreboding shadows your fear generator was pandemonium lightning mm-hmm. your defender was downpour and your utilitarian was fractured it would be fun once we're done to like get a group of five and like each play teams yeah and that see how that goes that would be cool fun, yeah. but yeah that's yeah. my team <clears throat> laura what's yours all right so my team for offense i really had to pick volcano oh oh i feel like this is hard for laura because you play so many I offense, play many offensive and characters. you love all of them right so when i move all of my dahan around mm-hmm. as thunder speaker i'm really able to blow up a lot of things on the board yeah. mm-hmm. um, so that's why i've picked thunder speaker as my offensive character like you you can bring huge armies in and then well, when you let your volcano often? blow up all over the place. That's why Volcano is my you mean, offensive character. Did you mean Thunder Speaker was your controller? No, nope, my offensive character. I also enjoy bringing my huge ocean waves in. And blowing oh. up the whole entire board with oh. my ocean. Oh, I, oh, I, I so Lord cheated think, again. <laughs> I, I think I'm finally starting to grasp. Okay. Lord <laughs> cheated the rules again and <laughs> didn't follow the. I also really looking. appreciate it <laughs> in the slow phase when they hit you and you just take your big stone fist and you are able to wallop them. So stone is right your back. So uh, stone is my offensive character. Okay, all right, all right. So that's you know? Lord's team. Oh, I oh, also really, oh. really appreciate it. If, you know, if you pick up the right, we were talking about how your character can move and like, oh, change yeah, and morph. Definitely. And so, you know, maybe you send your flocks out to defend everything, but if you pick up the right character with the the flocks and whatnot, the the beasts, yeah, and whatnot, then you know you just use your many minds to definitely to offensive really character. Do some I mean, I, offense. I mean, events, yep. Ryan, events, Ryan. Yup. <laughs> or you know, maybe you just have a ton of money. Money's good. You know. That so when as keeper, you just play many, many big cards. So keeper, very good offense. Yep. Okay. Yep. Keeper's my offense. There's Laura's team. Offense, <laughs> offense, <laughs> offense, and offense. And offense. now you will notice layered in there is actually my entire team plus keeper. Yeah. That uh, <laughs> that hot Tinder date in that I don't want to actually. First date. few seconds, John and I are looking at each other. Uh, what, what, wait, Ryan's what, like, do I need to stop the recording? What? what? <laughs> and then. Oh, <laughs> they're all off. Laura doesn't play utility characters. I'm sorry. Are there other people on this team? <laughs> what do you mean, team buff? I buff me. The only fear I get is the fear of the sword. <laughs> so, what was your team again? It was volcano. Okay, well, okay. Let's really break it down here because. Okay. 
<laughs> control moving characters around, and then you do a big smacky smack. Oh, so that is under under speaker. That makes sense. Okay, that makes you know, sense. Kaboom. Mm-hmm. Yes. For fear, you are defending, but maybe with many minds, my first time I played, I picked up their like <laughs> ultimate leveled up major card, and then every time I pick them up, I'm like, oh yeah, this is an offensive card. Wait, what? Where's sea monsters? <laughs> <laughs> Laura yeah, got really. sea monsters on her first pull, and she's nice. like, this spirit's incredible. <laughs> I kept the buffed sea monster card and we, hit the other one. <laughs> we keep cheating. <laughs> No, hey, but- coming from the person who did like the roided multiple aspects for yeah. one character, it's kind of toned down. The course, yeah. honestly. <laughs> but for fear, many of mine, they yes. do get a lot of fear, Don't. and I enjoy that you can move stuff around. Yeah. I like being mobile. that makes sense. And Very then you scary can spirit. like do some big stuff if you pick up the right yep. card. And honestly, events mm. usually add fear or yeah, offense they do as some we've stuff. They pick it yeah. off. Mm-hmm. Defense. I love stone because mm. of that. Like I can defend. I can move in and be like, we both good now, and then smack. Yeah. Right defense. Defend is like in heavy quotation. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse you. <laughs> it is defense. It is defense. <laughs> just not in a way that most people use defense, that's all. Yeah, it's just a unique form of it. Yeah. As I see it, I'm not dying and then I'm killing, so. <laughs> hey. It's a very offensive I've defense. I've defended yep. me. That's right. <laughs> and other and spirits. Who happen to be the there. Yeah. The <laughs> Y'all can have fun with whatever you're doing. I'm fine. And then utility, because I didn't know what utility was, <laughs> I figured my trash can of the ocean changes the game That's you know it just changes the game other people can shove stuff into it and it, sure yeah title you know, boom, yeah. ocean can kind of get around and do stuff and i do enjoy like when you can't have a big turn with ocean yeah and just go smacky smack so, i do yeah. think ocean having um, the awesome. actual quote-unquote ocean tile it is a boon to the team obviously. yeah no it is, it is. and then it's just true. as my actual offensive character because y'all make me pick i probably <laughs> will go with volcano okay. because everybody else i listed for offense can go into something else and I like the style of Volcano. Like, yeah, Keeper, we've talked about that. Keeper's like... Insane. Insane, but boring. Oh. You know, you're just like, yeah, yeah, you have all the money, sure. Knock yourself out. And good Volcano's cool. Volcano's cool. And different, unique. Laura has one game where she gets the 10 explosions. She's like, Volcano's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimate destruction. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know how my team is actually synergizing terribly well. It's going to be very destructive team. <laughs> We're going to run around blowing ourselves up. <laughs> Four of members of your team each could Carry. legitimately be regarded as an attacker. As like a top tier <laughs> Volcano, attacker. Volcano, Thunderspeaker, Stone, and Ocean, each in their own ways, can be regarded as an attacker. So, good on many, you minds for many minds. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> has no synergy with Beast with anyone. <laughs> nope. Which is fine because you're preventing over stuff. Him. Yeah, that's true. You get all the when beasts. When it comes on the board. to incoming blight, Ocean naturally blights early game anyway. Stone can assist and survive with blight Good volcano point. spit and blight so thunder speaker should stay away from ocean and volcano you probably have the two most friendly fire characters besides keeper <laughs> ocean kind of gobbles up those to hunt oceans too. and vol- <laughs> nom, 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 nom. when it comes to friendly fire but if thunder speaker is their one army yeah like, just stay in this one section yeah and that's what thunder speaker kind of keep- likes let me take all of your dahan mm-hmm. i hope you guys can no, do stuff seriously. without them because yeah, i want true. them it's true but keeper kills them <laughs> <laughs> Volcano kills him. Ocean kills him. Um, I'm therefore, sorry, that's why Keeper got booted off the team. Therefore, <laughs> let me take all of yours. You do your thing. I'm a mother hen over Sh- here. Leave me alone. I guess a lot of my Call characters, back. other than Stone, are also... Well, no, Stones. They're all very selfish characters, too. <laughs> I got mine. Screw you. <laughs> Ocean helps. Have you ever seen the... Sort of, but Ocean's like, I can't defend the inside. I'm just sticking to the coast. Thunder Speaker's just sitting there like Matt Damon from Saving Private Ryan. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 uh, go, Get out of here. here. <laughs> So, yeah. You know, I would love That's to see how that game comes out. Yeah, that would be a fun that game. That is just chaos. I guess maybe I'm That's more of blight. thought at... Because Stone <laughs> allows so much extra blight. That's a ton of blight. I'm really bad yeah. at thinking big picture like you guys are. And when you were like, quick, babe, you got to pick your five while we're standing in line to get a table somewhere. And I'm like, uh, these ones and, and that one. <laughs> we don't talk about our personal lives. <laughs> <laughs> we don't go to tables. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, which character would I like to play at each of these different roles? And then that's like my interior design style. Do I like that thing? Yes. Then it automatically goes with the other things that I like. Just this kaleidoscopic array of things. 
things that totally will work because they have to. If you Bam. smash them in together hard enough. Yeah, it's like, right. it's like the, doors, or die. the door's unlocked, but you still break it down. Right. It's like, uh, it was unlocked. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh, well, it's open now. So, yeah, that's my little shout out to all of you who are making your lists and you just made them based on what you like and didn't really think about how they would just play out. Utter because chaos. when are you going to get five people together and make them play all of these? You're not. So, it's all right. Team Boom Boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Many Minds is there. No, yeah. <laughs> the Many Minds and the Boom Booms. That's right. Many Minds and the Boom Booms. That sounds like a band. <laughs> it, does. it does. It does. Fun right. team, Laura. So there's my team. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. That was How good. How about you, Ryan? <laughs> As I'm hearing all of your lists here and the people that are on them, I'm feeling like there's the Goldilocks treatment of some consideration for the synergy, some consideration for how each of them hold up within the category. That's like the medium ground, the middle ground. Yeah. Laura gives no craps at all. <laughs> it's completely nothing. None. And then I'm on the other extreme. So. A lot of consideration. When it came to this question as it was asked to me, I was thinking, well, I got the text saying, make an all-star team who, when I hear the term all-star team, I'm thinking this is a championship winning team. Yeah. This is really freaking good. This isn't something that's just flippant where there's a bench warmer who got in here somehow because someone else got sick that day. No, these are your A-listers. All studs. Right. But the thing was is the way that it was worded to me was make an all-star team that's a five-player team, mm -hmm. but each member of the team represents one of the summaries of yeah, powers. one of the categories. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily is the embodiment of the best at this or the best at that. Just each member in some way resembles that. Yeah. Because I got to thinking, the way I saw it, we're going to see a lot of similar emotions, probably with everyone's data. The main reason why I wrote my list in the way that I did is because of following emotion. If I really wanted to go and look at the best of the best for each individual one, everyone is pretty much going to have the same list. Bring your fear. You're going to have <laughs> Thunder Speaker for offense. Yep. Maybe some people will vary. You're going to have Finder for control. Yep. Some people will vary. You're going to have Bringer for fear. Mm -hmm. Some people will vary. Maybe they'll say Ocean, perhaps. Mm. For Defender, you're going to see Green. Yeah. You might see some variation. You Maybe might Earth. see... Right. Earth is simple, but green can just do more. So you're going to see green. Green is more liked in the community than Earth is. Yeah. You might see Serpent. No, you're going to see green. Utility, you're going to see one of three people. It's either Serpent, it's either Shifting Memory, or it's Fractured. Fractured is the most popular. You're going to see Fractured. Yeah. Mm. This is what I'm calling it. 90% <laughs> of everyone who votes is going to say Thunder Speaker, Finder, Bringer, Green, Fractured. There's going to be some exceptions here. When it comes to Fractured, you're going to maybe, like I said, see either Shifting Memory or you're going to see Snake. Yeah. Some people are going to get fun with it. Some people are going to say someone who actually isn't a utilitarian, but there's someone else who does something really fun that helps, that's Team Buffy, that they like. Yeah. So, for instance, someone might say the speed of lightning. No, lightning is not a utility character, but maybe the person who voted really likes the speed increases, so they put mm. lightning. The energy utility. from River. Right, but the emotion I'm getting here is with some exceptions allowed, we're going to see the same list every time. Okay. And that list is Thunder Speaker finer bringer green fracture so i was like eh. first off that's not what i thought of with the list when i saw you post on reddit i was like oh that's not what you texted me yeah you texted me what's an all-star team where at least one person represents each of the things okay well i had a list and i think this is actually really rock solid this team yeah and i think you guys are actually going to agree with me on this one because when you think right, about it it's like right. okay so at its best spirit island reaches its zenith with the majority of the fan base out there because of the cooperative nature of the game and the synergies that you can have so regarding every one of the summaries of powers offense control Fear, defense, utility. What is the team or what is a team that resembles all of those things well and each member synergistically connects with every other member yeah. in a fantastic way. Gears and a watch type of thing. Before yeah. I reveal to you what they are, I want you to think about this, and this is like a little litmus test. And this is something that I did myself to make sure that the synergies were just absolutely perfect. Any two... Any member on this team, if you did a two-player game, makes a fantastic combo. Oh, okay. Every single two. Maybe you're doing a three-player game. Any three, fantastic combo. Any four, 
fantastic combo. But literally, like I said, when we're done, and we will pick any two of these five. This one, yep. that one. Wow, they're great. Pick this one and that one. Wow, they're great. It's not so, like you have a vengeance and a sharp fangs. Right, like, oh, we right. have all this play on the oh, island. Right. Sharp fangs like, oh. One of the reasons or why this is incredibly team. useful is every single member is helpful to every single member. This is huge for the fact of, oh, where does so-and-so spawn on which board? It doesn't matter. <laughs> you have a neighbor that really clicks with you. Mm-hmm. And so we've spoken about kind of this list in the past. So I just went all for it. Give it to me. My attacker is Heart of the Wildfire. Yes. Someone who, yes, when you think of offense, ocean and vengeance and Thunderspeaker can get significantly higher amounts of damage out there. But guess what's more important out there, guys? Doing four damage where it's needed will always be better than 60 damage where it's not. Mm. So what is more important? Cool, achievement unlocked. I did an attack that was 50 plus damage. Okay, well, I did a attack that did four damage. Okay, well, the 50 damage looks a lot bigger. Cool. Well, let's look at some other details, though. That four damage was split into four different lands, and they each nixed a lone explorer. Four lands are clear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did 50 damage in one land. I killed everything. One land is clear. Four damage cleared four lands. Mm -hmm. 50 damage cleared one land. I would much rather have less damage in more efficient places than a ton of damage in one spot. And you've spoken on just liking to be efficient. Yeah, I was about to say that. Sums up Ryan is, like, efficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good point. And yet no one's going to complain. Perfectly timed out all over the board. You always end up, like, the clear board first. Yep, yep. And it's fun to do big damage numbers. Oh, yeah. But that's only usually salient when you have a lot of problems. Yeah. Or when a controller is sweeping them all up into one spot. So, no one's going to complain when you see wildfire in offense. And I'm guessing other people are going to put wildfire too. Because that's just flame, fire, simple. It's easy to understand. But there's so much more to this character and why they're on this list. My controller is River. Hey! If you want, you can say Travel River if you like. I was going with Base River, but both of them can do very well. River is fantastic, a simple controller, and I feel as if I don't really need to say too much. I thought it might be lure for you, but I like River, Uh especially with Wildfire, because getting Flame Fury to River and being able to now take out a city Mm -hmm. is huge with Flash Mm -hmm. Floods. And then vice versa, where River can give that much-needed energy Mm -hmm. to Wildfire so they can go more bottom track or something. Already. I'm already like seeing said, it. I'm already you seeing see it. see the yeah. combination. Yeah. Fun fact, though, there is a card in this game whose artwork shows River currently buffed with Flame's Fury on them. Spur on with Words of Fire actually shows what that looks like when River gets Flame's Fury cast on him. Kind of fun. That's just a completely neither here nor there kind of thing. If you look closely, you can see Cleveland in the background. <laughs> he set our river on fire. <laughs> Back in the 80s. <laughs> A Nolan Nasser piece of art. (laughs) You love your Nolan Nasser piece of art. So, my attacker was Wildfire. My controller was River. My fear character is Shroud of Silent Mist. Yes, makes sense. Totally makes sense. Wildfire, mobile. River, also mobile. Not in the fact that they're moving presence, but the fact that they use their presence very strategically to get sacred sites for free. Or if you're doing Travel River, those to hunt are super mobile. Yep. And Mist can also go ahead and generate a ton of fear while evading Wildfire's damage. Yes. Also, the fact that I have another wetland user. (gasps) River is a wetland user. Mist is a wetland user. But Mist can also coexist with Wildfire really easy. Damage coming in? Blight coming in? Yeah. They can survive very easy. Mist can provide safety and security for other people so that they can survive wildfires incoming damage. And a good also, controller too. Right. Wildfire and river both can give energy. Guess what Mist really benefits from? Energy. Getting energy. So you can go bottom track and go after those plays. Mm-hmm. Nice. You can Maybe. see here how already there is a certain theme that is arriving. Yeah. Defense. This was easy. My defender, downpour. Ah! All the way. 100% downpour. It's true that so many other characters are very good in defense, but nobody, and I mean nobody, can defend ultimately quite like downpour. Was this hard for you? This was hard for me. Was it? Picking defense. Like you said, there's so many good ones. Once you see what I was going for, honestly, this list I wrote uh, was written in about maybe 15 seconds. Oh, okay. No joke. So, defense. Oh, my goodness. Downpour in the fact that you were isolating 
things, preventing bad guys mm-hmm. from going places. You defended a land because no one explored because it was isolated, if you're lucky. But Downpour is also very mobile, like everyone else. Another wetland user. Now, both with Mist and River, they are making wetlands that Mist can spawn in, that River can get a sacred site in. Yep. But also, Downpour has Daha manipulation, which River is using a ton of. Wildfire has Daha manipulation that can send to friends. Yeah. Mist has Daha manipulation that they can make use of. But Downpour can also heal people who died from an accidental wildfire thing. Mm. Downpour is bringing you back if they even hit you. Wildfire is cleaning themselves up. But Downpour can assist with cleaning up Wildfire even faster so that it's not really a problem. But who's killing your Dahan? Because that's a thing, right? That's a good thing, Laura? (laughs) (laughs) But who's drowning your Dahan? (laughs) Nobody on this team. (laughs) We like our Dahan. (laughs) And as we said before, Downpour is very, very capable of stopping pretty much any attack that's coming in. Yeah. Even if it's a Russian or a Swedish attack that's coming in, Downpour can actually fly in there and stop and it. Stop it. Yeah. It is insane. And then my utilitarian. I don't know. Um, what do you think, Laura? Because we haven't guessed for Ryan. We gotta guess one of Ryan's. Utilitarian just so so It's so because it could, it could be, be like any of them. And it could be one card if that one card. Did you does pick enough. memories? That's Laura's guess. Laura picked shifting memory. Just like it's kind of out there. Spread rampant green. The best utility character in the game. Spread of rampant green. I knew it! <laughs> you know it, you know it. Get to proliferation is so good! Get to proliferation will always be the best utility thing ever. Ironically, ever. it's funny because downpour and green can be defense or utility. And True. in this team, downpour was my defender and green was my utility. So green literally pairs with each of these others phenomenally. You have wildfire green. Oh my goodness. If you want to see how ridiculously good that pairing is, listen to our Brandenburg Prussia thing. Mm -hmm. River green. Oh my goodness. River giving green energy and I don't even have to say anymore. (laughs) Seriously. I I could. I could. I actually could, but I don't have to. Mist and green. Oh my word. (laughs) Guess who really likes getting their presence out there so that they can get a little bit more adjacent damage when Mm -hmm. it comes to fog closes in. Or I really like having more presence in a land so that I can use Unnerving Paul to get a lot more defense out there. Oh, guess who's getting rid of Blight out there for Wildfire to go ham? Guess who can survive Wildfire's excursions? Green. Because they can just They can just right keep back. coming back. But what about Downpour Green? Do I even need to talk about why that's <laughs> free? <freaking laughs> <good? laughs> hey there, editing Ryan here. My past self just made the claim that Downpour and Green make a fantastic combo, and that I don't even need to bother explaining why. While many of the veterans out there already know about the good synergy between these two spirits, I'll at least mention one big reason for why they're great for any of the newer players out there. It's the Gift of Abundance, Gift of Proliferation combo. Green has an awesome card that allows a friend to place one of their presents from one of their tracks onto the field. This is great for a plethora of reasons, and is responsible for much of Rampant Green's popularity. Gift of Abundance, among other things, allows you to let a friend repeat one of their powers by paying its cost. In essence, any character that allows Green to repeat Gift of Proliferation or reclaim it from the discard, or both, can result in some seriously awesome plays. Earth can do one of these things, and Fractured can do the other, so Downpour isn't the only character who can help in this kind of way. As it pertains to this particular team, however, Downpour could let Green play Gift of Proliferation twice on Wildfire, for example, allowing them to do serious damage with Blazing Presence. Now this is highly aggressive, and the Blight put out because of this should be monitored, but it is nonetheless a very powerful tool available to the team. Being able to do Gift of Proliferation twice is simply amazing. Alright, back to you. If you notice, every single one of these members can manipulate Dahan, can You have Blight Manipulation? Around. I have Blight Manipulation. I have Dahan Utilization. This is the ultimate team firefighter. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. This is wildfire burning everything. But I have the water both from below and above. Yes. And the mist that came from it and the green nourishing the other half of that water. Every How thematic. That's so Pick cool. any two members. Wildfire River. 
Oh my goodness. You may think this is the two that don't mesh at all, but listen to Hasberg. Yeah. Yes. Listen to Hasberg. River natively can't really coexist with wildfire, which is why you draw the line on the border. Wildfire is shoving all their Dahan over, and River, who hits harder on the coast, is shoving the bad guys in the inland towards wildfire. They're trading. I'll send you my Dahan. You give me your bad guys. Perfect. You use Dahan to kill everybody. I use your bad guys to just roast them. Yeah. It's insane. River has such an easy time dropping off bad guys on the border saying, here, take them. Cool. Take them. <laughs> Got it. It is like this exchange. Yeah. If you will. If somehow someone ever would die, mist could probably prevent you from dying because wildfire is going crazy whenever oh, yeah. there's a big problem spot. But if there's a big problem spot, A, green can stop it from happening. B, downpour could just straight up stop it with defense. Or C, wildfire can get in there ahead of time. That's three contingencies on really big problems. Yeah. But then at the exact same time, you have people hanging around, which is fine because mist can go anywhere quick there's gonna be a problem let me get in there prevent you from dying literally at any good. time you're like oh i just any slip number in here. of peeps yeah so i have a very water heavy build mm-hmm. but then green and wildfire are both plant heavy and so is downpour who is plant heavy yet i also have fire all conglomerated within everyone's wildfire almost like sharing crazy. elements it's kind of cool so yeah. in a way wildfire is completely able to go ham and river mist downpour and green for all the reasons can completely give Give wildfire the perfect setting to go ham and everyone else can work around them to coexist and save you if ever there's a problem. And Mist is still going ahead and hey, even if somehow Mist couldn't get to those areas because I don't have enough presence out there or sure. they're too far away, mm-hmm. literally every single one of these people can control. And every single one of them can be like, here, take these guys over there. And if ever you have a problem, Mist is holding on to the damage that Green is using for the Creepers Turn to Mortar. Hey, Green ain't so great on buildings because it takes them a while to take away and you have to get to that fully leveled up Creeper's Terran and Mortar so that you can go ahead and do the repeat the power three times so you can get rid of a city but Mist can hold on to that damage. Mist is like eek singe. And right, just, like brings down their <laughs> right. health. But then that's also helping River, who can't hit as hard oh, in yeah. the inland lands. So Mist will go and hold on to that damage. So your coastal damage is still just as good. As your but inland. then your inland damage is comparable because Mist held on to that damage for you. But then you have the pairing of Wildfire Green, who can go absolutely ham. One of the best pairings in the game. One of the best pairings in the game. And yet, Wildfire River, or Wildfire Mist, the fact that Mist is completely unhindered yeah. by Wildfire's gameplay style. Downpour Wildfire being like, hey, really be a shame if, you know, you came over here and I can coexist with you just fine. Mm-hmm. Oh, you have blight over there and you don't want to go back there to stop a cascade? Let me fly over there because I can do that. Remove the blight and I'll fly away. Now you're good. So you have Downpour doing your reconstruction medic stuff, but Green is also doing that for themselves and literally think of Wildfire River Miss Downpour. Who benefits from getting an extra presence out there? Uh, Everyone's fighting in line. Everyone. (laughs) So who do you pick? Oh, it just depends on your need. But you can see, if I want damage, I'm giving it to Wildfire. If I want crazy clumped up damage in one big spot, I'm giving it to River for massive flooding. And then Mist was there to hold on to all the damage that wasn't there. Oh, I need a good glue. I need more glue to help with all my problems. I'm doing just a little bit of everything. I'm just missing the tiniest detail. I need to do a little bit earlier. I need to do a little bit this. Give that present to Mist. They'll hold on to it for you so you don't have to lose your progress. You can save your progress. Ah, I'm not quite getting the fast response times that I need for various things. Give it to Downpour. Mm -hmm. Downpour gets that thing. Whatever repair thing you found, they can do it again and again because you gave them another present so that they unveiled a move thing, perhaps, or yet another card play for them, which is huge, or more water elements. But then you have Sacred Sight Ease of Access because Green has Sacred Sights all over the place. But then you have Downpour making wetlands to which Mist can spawn from and River gets Sacred Sights crazy easy. Even Green can grow to jungles or wetlands. Which means River won't be spending so much time making Sacred Sacred sites, they're going to be spreading out a lot faster. Yeah. And so everyone is going to be getting expedited by green. Everyone's going to be getting saved and healed by downpour. Yet everyone's going to be getting energy from river and wildfire. Mm -hmm. People are dying less often because mist is protecting you from that happening. And then wildfire is having a blast getting bonus damage to whoever (laughs) needs it. 
Have you ever her. seen River get Flames Fury? It's kind of awesome. <laughs> Have you seen Mist get Flames Fury? Flames Fury is just a good card. It's kind of awesome. Have you seen Downpour getting Flames Fury to trigger on a card that's repeated five times? What? It's kind of awesome. <laughs> Have you seen Flames Fury on green? <laughs> it's kind of awesome. Kind of broken <laughs> <laughs> on green. So this is Team Firefighter. It's like it. Wildfire. It's River. It's Mist. It's downpour. It's green. A two-player game, three-player game. Take any one of those members. You are getting a awesome. I like that S tier squad, in my opinion. And they even, can take on anyone. And even within their own individual categories, exceedingly strong. Mm-hmm. I mean, Wildfire is regarded as super offensive. Mm-hmm. Obviously, people love River as control. Right. Even mm-hmm. Miss, people have said very good fear. So it's not like right. you were like going super against the grain. Right. You didn't pick like shifting memory for fear. Right. You know, like you picked some really quality well, spirits. They and each help each other. And they help each other. Like yes. you said. So they're good at their defined roles. Exceedingly good, but then they work exceedingly yep. well. You put them together and they're just even better. Even better. Better than the sum of their parts. Pick any one of them. Find a flaw. Someone else on the team helps sure. them. Ah, River can't just, do fear. River can't do fear. That's fine. We have Downpour <laughs> over here yeah. who can just grab random spam blood, fear. spam it, and it's fine. You have Mist. Everything they do is fear. Heck, wildfire. Green. Right. Even Green can do fear. Just yeah. Bam. Three right there. Wildfire. Threatening flames. Bam. There's Ooh, four. Yeah. You know, like, then you have, oh, well, Mist is slow and can't get energy. Well, Wildfire and River can give him energy and Green can make him grow faster. Yep. But Wildfire's crazy damaging, not really a whole lot of defense. Mist can defend. Downpour can defend. Green can defend. Or well, Green doesn't really have a whole lot of attacks there. Wildfire's here. Mist is here. Yeah. Downpour's here. River's here. People are like, oh, there's too much blight from Wildfire. Oh, Downpour. Yeah. Right. And Downpour. And Green. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Green. <laughs> and, and Wildfire. And wildfire. <laughs> <laughs> so that is crazy. That's a fun team. Very so, strong, really awesome. right? Very strong. So, for all of our attackers, mine was Wildfire, John's was Vengeance, Laura's was Volcano. And, and all the of rest. It. Yep. <laughs> Control, mine was River, John's was Foreboding Shadows, Laura's was Thunderspeaker. For Fear, we had Mist, Pandemonium Lightning, and Many Minds. Mm. The only I know the only crossover. Thing. I'll change it. <laughs> I like was green. John's and Mine's Defender with Downpour and Downpour. And Laura's was Stone. And that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And, and Downpour's utili- just pretty awesome. Downpour's yeah. really good. And then our utility characters, Green, Fractured, and Ocean. So it's only one repeat on the entirety. Out of 15. Yeah. That's wow. what I like about this group. Peeps. Very different. We do have varied yep. opinions. Mm-hmm. And then Downpour's is really good. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so what I meant by the Goldilocks stream, it was Laura was like, bah! And do whatever she wanted. John was like, eh, I thought about it. Consider it. it. it and it. mine was, it's the very bed upon which we're sleeping. It is like, the backbone. It, it is the backbone, the crux, the supports, the stilt that we stand on. I like that. Yeah. But that was like really I said, well thought out. when mm. you said All Star, All Star doesn't mean pretty good. All Star means freakishly good. Or just like among the best. The LeBron One thing that's James. interesting is that we didn't see Keeper on any of these lists. I'd say Ooh. because Keeper probably is very good at defense, very very good at offense, but usually isn't going to be very good at any one of those things. I consider them to be a counterattacking defender. I'm thinking that we're probably not going to see Keeper on a lot of the And people think Keeper is the best spirit. That's so interesting. Right. But here's the thing. Multifaceted spirits are my favorite, not characters that just do one of them at a time. Right. You didn't pick Finder for control. This whole all-star team thing, this whole thing, we're going to see some spirits not mentioned anywhere who are quite strong, who deserve to be recognized because this list highlights characters that are singular focus. Like mm-hmm. I said, Thunder Speaker, Finder, Bringer, Green Fracture. Those are the names you're going to see a lot. Yeah, we're going to see Serpent. We're going to see Wildfire. We're going to see Ocean. We're going to see Shifting Memory. Mm-hmm. We're going to see mm-hmm. these characters, I'm sure. But we're not going to see Fangs too much. We'll see him once or twice. We'll see Keeper, maybe once or twice. Maybe three times. I don't know. Because the thing is, is characters that have multifaceted things for a team of five aren't going to really be here. On a team of three, you'll probably see them. Sure. That's Because true. that's Oh, we need someone to cover both offense and defense. Stone does that. Yeah. Keeper does that. In a five-player game, you don't want someone that does two focuses. You want one, for the purposes of this list anyway. So just keep in mind here that that's probably what we're going to see. That's why at the beginning I said it's kind of hogwash. But, you know, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what people come back with. Right. And the reason why I didn't have Keeper was because Keeper does a lot of friendly fire to Dahan, which I do not want. They mm-hmm. don't use them. So that didn't fit in with my wetland-centric team. Yeah. Dahan-friendly yeah. build that I had. I wanted a mobile Dahan-friendly 
completely wetland-centric team that could cover every single base and could help every single other person in mm-hmm. some way. Keeper didn't fit in there. Keeper is not necessarily the best team player, so <laughs> no. which is fine. They have such power that they can be a loner. Yeah, be Keeper can literally carry games. Yep. yep, Stone is a loner who gets along with people a little bit better than Keeper, mm-hmm. I feel. But their gameplay style can be pretty... To some characters, so... I just like the thought process that went behind each one of our teams. Like you're saying how... Mm. I don't know. We all have different play styles, have different favorites. We all think spirits are best at different things. So it's just cool to see 14 Mm -hmm. out of 15 different spirits. Yep. And then when you guys get into the data from the community, you're going to get so many more different play styles, different different opinions. I'm very interested to see what they're all going to say. The explanations from each person contributing will be kind of cool. That would be cool. These are fun to do. Yep. And at the end of the day, every spirit can play off of every spirit somehow. So, you know. <laughs> sure. But I like your synergy. And so. I think, honestly, Laura's would be, like, most chaotic. Yeah, chaotic yeah. Yeah. Fire. probably would work. Just, like, nothing's on the board. It's all burnt. Yep. That'd be fun. <laughs> My team just limps home. Yeah. Yep. But a win's a win. And, of course, with what I was saying, it's not like every one of those members is going to be on the same board doing each of those things. Yeah. But it can happen. It can. Who and knows? And so, if that certain need arises, you have access to the fix. Mm-hmm. So Somewhere it can happen. Furthermore, regardless of the layout of the board, you're going to have a neighbor or two, unless it's like Archipelago. But you Most will, often. in some way, benefit from your neighbor, and they'll benefit you somehow, mm-hmm. regardless of who it is. So that was like another beyond the game thing, is the physical placement of who goes where. Downpour and green happen to be neighbors? Sweet. Yeah. Wildfire and green happen to be neighbors? Oh. Even better. <laughs> Mist and river were neighbors? Hey. Sure. <laughs> like, yeah. We've seen river and wildfire be great neighbors. Right. Yeah. And of the entire team, wildfire river at first would appear like the most incompatible and yet they are incredibly compatible <laughs> so oh i mean or sorry completely destroyed Hasbro. yeah yeah you were just like hey i'll stay on my side you stay on your side it's kind of like the front lines at gettysburg where like here's their lines here's theirs and yet there was that one river that people would walk in and exchange coffee for a cigarette oh, yeah. or something so like river i have my own thing wildfire has their own thing but I need Dahan, you need bad guys. Wildfire has Dahan manipulation. River has bad guy manipulation. Mm. Ironically, they both have both. Both have Dahan manipulation, both have bad guy manipulation. So, have Wildfire send all the Dahan that way. Whenever they enter a spot, Dahan can run away, Beast can run away, but Asphyxiating Smoke also shoves yeah. Dahan, so just get them all as the game goes on, closer and closer to the River. River, once they're close enough, can pull them and grab them. All the wild River's like, hey, I need to get bad guys to the coast. I can kill them there easy, but I can't kill bad guys in the inland as well. Flames shoot. That's fine. Either get Flames Fury or just send them sure. to Wildfire. Wildfire's like, yoink, get them. Or across the border, send Asphyxiating Smoke, pop a town. It's awesome. Bam, there it is. Like, it works. It works. It does. It works. All the while, River never having to worry about Wildfire's destructive nature. And even if it was an issue because Wildfire, for some reason, the team deemed it necessary that Wildfire goes on River's board, yeah. Mist can get in there and keep River from dying. And Mist is fast enough to get there, trust me. And Downpour can get in there and defend certain things from happening if it's oh, a yeah. bad guy attack because they're also crazy fast. And if both Mist and Downpour weren't fast enough to get there, Green can make them faster because they give him more presence so that they got more presence out there to reach them that spot or of course downpour can bring them back from the dead and it's a good team <laughs> i would love to see like that team in action that would be so fun this summer fun. we should actually like yeah play these teams i'd love it That'd be and awesome. if anybody in the community brings up a really interesting team yeah i like when people comment their battle reports so if anyone have tried like our yeah. teams or their own five player teams or something that's really worked out synergistically or within mm-hmm. their categories just let yeah, us know put I'd in love, the comments yeah. if you like actually played your team yeah That'd be fun. Ooh. That'd be cool. We've done little bits of team firefighter in the past, yeah. but not. We to should this just do extreme. full fledged. We should team firefighter. We, we can eat really spicy foods. <laughs> it's hot wings. Here you go. To whoever's playing wildfire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's playing green and downpour has like a nice salad, you know? <laughs> something, yeah, it's something mild. River player is just drinking really a lot of water. Yeah. And Miss player is just getting nothing but cotton candy. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we play a team offensive boom boom, we just throw food at each other. I think that would be a fun game. It's too. very German. Yeah! <laughs> so Blow it up. And then for John's team. I mean, I just picked the spirits I liked. Oh. Well, we eat go. John's food. <laughs> so German food again. And then John did that. <laughs> this was fun. Good all stars, everyone. Good teams. Yeah. Times. It is fun to kind of like build teams and think about what kinds of things yeah. each of them can do. And and good. It always goes different in execution than it does on paper. Yeah. But until next time, I can't wait to see what all of you had to say about this. It's going to be so much fun. As usual, we like to see the fun, crafty ideas that people of like course. to see. But 
Until next time, we will get to finishing this one up, getting it all shipshape and recorded ready for air. So, until next time, I've been Ryan. I'm John. And I'm also Laura. Hey! Peace out! Later! Bye! Thank you for listening to this episode of the Kindred Spirit Podcast. We appreciate you taking the time to do so. Feel free to visit us on our Instagram and Facebook page. You can find me on our Facebook page at The Kindred Spirit Podcast. To get a hold of John, check out our Instagram page at the KSP123. We look forward to hearing from you and seeing you in future episodes.